Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with my first impressions of the Felix Audio Echo headphone amp. This amp comes from Poland and it currently sells for 499 euros which at today's exchange rate works out to $568. It's an OTL type design um, and OTL stands for Output Transformer List and this type of amp is usually recommended and works best with high impedance headphones and um, I'll get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. Uh, first thing I wanted to show you was this amp was shipped to me from Poland for a review and somewhere along the line it I think it got lost because um, it disappeared from tracking for 23 days and I've received uh, what three four packages in the last six months from Eastern Europe and Russia and they usually take about 12 days to get here to the central USA this one took a month when it finally did get arrived the box was completely beat up I don't know if I can uh, show you this um, the whole box, the whole one whole corner was bashed up and all taped back together with uh, priority mail stickers. And even the uh, inner box, it was double box fortunately, even the inner box had substantial damage to it. But fortunately, and I give credit to uh, Felix Audio, that this amp was substantially packed and really high quality foam. It had this foam padding around it, which is about two inches thick, all the way around the entire amp. And the tubes were boxed and uh, in a separate piece of foam and several pieces of foam around this. So anyway, even though the box was almost destroyed, the amp arrived um, completely undamaged. Uh, even the tubes looked good. So i uh, got to give credit to Felix Audio. If they hadn't packed this so well, I would have received a severely damaged amp. So anyway, um, specifications on this amp. Uh, the thing measures about eight and a half inches wide. It's about ten and a half inches deep front to back, including the volume knob and the input and outputs on the back. Um, it's about four and three quarters inches tall to the top of the tubes and it weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds. It's actually uh, it's really solid feeling. It's heavy for its size. Um, Felix Audio uh, states a power output of 350 milliwatts and distortion at 0.4 percent at 20 milliwatts into 300 ohms. Uh, uses four tubes, uh, two 6N 6Ps and two 6N 1Ps. Uh, this headphone is recommended uh, by Felix Audio for headphones ranging from 100 to 600 ohms of impedance and uh, I'm going to go a little deeper into that in a few minutes. Uh, anyway, I wanted to show you the amp and like I said the thing is actually quite heavy for its size. On the front you've got um, your headphone jack, standard 6.3 millimeter, uh, single ended output, you've got a volume knob which feels heavy and substantial, really nice volume knob. And I do not want to drop this, so um, on the back you've got your on off switch, your AC input, and you've got your um, single ended inputs. Uh, high quality RCA connections, not the type to pull off if your uh, cable connection is too tight. And this also has a preamp function, so you've got preamp out, volume controlled preamp out on this. Uh, really a nice looking amp. Like I said, this thing's really heavy for its size. Oh, and real wood on the sides. I believe it's oak. So uh, nice looking too. Anyway, um, 
As most of you know, I've only been doing uh, reviews on YouTube here for about, uh, we're almost at 10 months now. So anyway, this is my first review of a tube amp. In fact, this is the first tube amp I've ever had a chance to uh, listen to or review. And uh, Felix Audio actually describes this as an entry-level tube amp. And to be honest, I wasn't really expecting, uh, you know, to be that impressed with it. Um, you know, I've heard a lot about tube amps. You know, I, um, as the administrator of the headphone experience on Facebook, you know, I get a chance to read, you know, articles, uh, reviews, um, you know, people's post opinions, all that every day on tube amps. And, you know, I hear a lot of good about them, but most of the tube amps that that have, you know, really heard good things about have been more expensive tube amps. So um, it's an entry level or, you know, so-called entry level described by Felix. I wasn't really, you know, um, I didn't know what to expect. So um, I'll tell you what I did expect. I was thinking that it's a less expensive tube amp. I was probably going to um, hear a pretty high noise floor and you know, um, probably hiss or hum or something like that. And uh, to be honest, I'm completely blown away. This amp is dead silent. It doesn't matter what I hook up to this amp, even the most efficient headphones I have, which is a pair of Sony uh, DJ headphones that are my primary test for, you know, to find out what the noise floor is because they're super efficient. Um, I think they're about 24 ohms and about 112 decibels at one milliwatt. I mean, these things are more efficient than most IEMs. So anyway, even with those, I cannot pick up any noise at all. No hum, no hiss or anything until the volume knob is up to about the one o'clock position before I even start to hear anything at all. I mean, dead silent halfway through the volume knob and with those headphones normal listening i mean pretty loud is like eight o'clock on their volume knob so i mean the normal listening is far below where i would hear any hiss at all so honestly i think the only amp and we're talking all solid state amps the only one that i have tested that i think is um, actually a little bit quieter than this is the hpa2 benchmark uh, out of my benchmark deck one which is just i mean there's just no noise no matter you can turn the volume up up to five o'clock and still don't get any noise so that's probably the most quiet amp i've ever heard and this probably ranks second i mean i'm blown away by how, how quiet this is i thought a tube amp was going to have background noise um also being especially not only being a tube amp but being an otl tube amp i was assuming that this was only going to work with high impedance headphones and to be honest, I don't have any high impedance headphones right now. I was expecting a couple of 300 ohm headphones to come in that haven't um, haven't arrived yet. I don't know if they've even, I don't think they've even shipped yet. So anyway, I have to use what I have right now. And um, I, well, first of all, uh, Felix recommends 100 ohm to 600 ohm headphones. And I don't have anything higher than about 45 ohms right now, which would be planar headphones, which I've also heard many times that planar headphones aren't a good match with OTL type tube amps either. And only being rated at 350 milliwatts, that's not near enough power for, you know, something like a Hi-Fi Man HE 560 or anything like that. But to my surprise, um, not only are some of the planar headphones I've plugged into this, uh, the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, the Hi-Fi Man Aria, and the Kennerton Thrower um, work surprisingly well with this. Um, they don't sound bad at all. And uh, a couple of headphones that did work really well, and that's why I decided to go ahead with my first impressions of this, because... Um, I tried the Grotto SR80E and um, I've tried, I realize it's only a $99 headphone, 
but I've run that off of probably six, seven different headphone amps. And I'm thinking that the SR80E sounds better with this amp than anything else I've ever hooked it up to. The, it just sounds outstanding. The problems I've had with the SR80, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it. It's a great entry-level audiophile headphone. But in my opinion, the bass is a little thin and the treble is a little bright. And this amp basically fixes everything about the SR80. It tames down the treble and it also gives it um, more impact and more um, extension in the bass. It makes it a really good sounding headphone. But um, what really worked well with this is the Kennerton Valley, which is about a 900 and I am not sure what it sells for right now, about $950. And the Kennerton Valley is a 32 ohm dynamic driver uh, type of headphone. It's um, rated at about, I think, 100 milliwatts at, I'm sorry, 100 decibels at one milliwatt. It's actually the exact same impedance and efficiency as the Grotto SR80. But anyway, the Kennerton Valley sounds really, really good with this headphone app. Um, just really happy with the way it sounds. Just, um, it actually um, probably as good as I've heard it off of any amp that I've tried it with yet. And once again, that would be at least half a dozen amps. Um, one thing I did want to point out, and I'm sure this is typical of tube amps, is that the thing does run pretty hot. Um, the uh, top of the amp up here on top of the transformer, I've measured that at about 127 degrees during operating temp normal operation. And the tubes themselves, which of course those are going to be hot, the tops of the tubes are measuring about 190 degrees. So that's something, being my first tube amp I've had to get used to a little bit, is don't touch the tubes and don't, you know, put any headphones or anything too close to them when they're on. But anyway, um, that's pretty normal. Um, you know, tube amps are going to run hot. So anyway, uh, as far as the sound, I'm not going to get too much into that tonight. I've only had this about a week, but I can say uh, the tone balance, I would say, is slightly on the warm side of neutral, and I'm pretty sure that's typical of tube amps, but it's not dark at all. The treble um, is very present and um, not lacking at all, so I'd say a very good tone balance. Um, what is kind of, what I noticed and I'm sh guessing this is because of the impedance issue because I'm losing using low impedance headphones is um, as far as the tone balance when I hook up planar headphones to this the bass um, depending on how efficient they are more uh, or less efficient planar headphones like the Hi-Fi Manorea which is harder to drive than the Sundara it sounds really good but it seems to lack a little bit of impact in the bass. And I'm guessing that would be because this type of amp is better at putting out voltage, which is going to work well with high impedance headphones and not so much current, which a low impedance planar headphone like the Aria needs a lot of current. So my guess is it's probably running a little short on current is why the bass impact is down a little bit. Uh, the Sundar, which is a little more efficient, sounds a little better. And not that the Rhea sounds bad, like I said, it's just lacking a little bit of bass impact. Uh, the Kenderton Thror, their flagship headphone, which is actually very efficient for a planar type headphone, it's uh, 42 ohms of impedance and 100 decibels at one milliwatt. The Thror actually sounds very good with this. So I was surprised, um, you know, like I said, I've always heard the planar headphones don't work well with tube amps, especially OTL type, but the Kennerton Thror sounds really good with this, but it is a very efficient planar headphone. Um, so anyway, um, even though some of the harder to drive 
planar type headphones um, lack are lacking a little bit of bass impact. I had the opposite experience with the low impedance um, dynamic driver headphones, uh, the SR80 and the Kennerton Valley. They actually both have more uh, bass impact and more bass um, extension than I've heard on um, solid state amps. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm guessing it has to do with the impedance. Um, I'm really not sure. I'm really looking forward to trying this with a higher impedance headphone, like a 300 ohm or something like that, but um, I'm waiting to get that. So, anyway, um, uh, something else uh, the clarity and detail on this really surprised me. I was assuming that out of especially, you know, a lower price tube amp like this, that it would be a little lacking in detail. And that's not the case at all either. I mean, um, I'm hearing a very good clarity, uh, detail, resolution out of this. It's not doesn't seem to be lacking at all. And um, you know, really pleasantly surprised by it. Um, I compared to some solid solid state amps that, um, especially in the same price range, I don't hear any lack of uh, detail at all in this amp. And then uh, the sound stage. I would describe as probably average in size. It's not, ex you know, it's not exceptionally large. It's pretty much normal, but it seems to have better um, layering. I, yeah, I guess layering would be the best word. You know, it seems to um, be more three dimensional than most of the solid state amps I've heard. So I'm liking that. I'm enjoying that part of it a lot. Um, it's just, it's got a nice, three-dimensional sound to it. So anyway, um, like I said, this is, it sounds exceptional with the Grotto SR80 and the Kennerton Valley works real well with this. The planar headphones, the more efficient ones work real well. The um, harder to drive still sound good, but it's not a perfect match. Um, what I'm hoping is um, I'm going to try to get a full review out on this in maybe about three weeks and I'm hoping I can get a hold of a pair of high impedance headphones by then and uh, be able to really um, hear this headphone amp for what it's made. I mean, just a fact, um, an amp like this is made for high impedance headphones and it's not really fair for me to do a full review with the wrong headphones. So um, I'm going to wrap this uh, first impressions up for now. And um, so number one, I'm going to try to get some high impedance headphones before I really dig into the sound of this and see what it's capable of. And also Felix Audio um, did recommend that I put 50 to 70 hours on this amp before I do um, any real evaluation on it that they say it's going to continue to sound better as the tubes burn in and um, you know I've heard that from a lot of people that that is a legitimate you know issue so um, you know as far as solid state I'm not sure about burn in if they need to be burned in or not but I'm you know guessing the tubes it is going to help them and uh, something else I want to mention is um, although Felix Audio recommends headphones in the 100 to 600 ohm range. I did check with them before I used lower impedance headphones and they said that it's absolutely safe to use headphones down to 16 ohms with this amp, that it will not hurt the amp and that they've actually um, heard reports of this amp actually working pretty well with lower impedance headphones and I would be one of those people. So. Um, as soon as I can get some uh, higher impedance headphones and put some more hours on this, I'm going to try to put together a full review, hopefully uh, within three weeks or so, maybe a little bit longer. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, this is Once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. And uh, if this video helped you in any way, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you're all welcome to join us over at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. Thank you.